Secretary Austin, thank you for acknowledging in response to Senator Wicker that uh, Hamas committed war crimes on October 7th and has been committing them every day since by using human shields. Um, I want to address what the protesters raised earlier. Uh, is Israel committing genocide in Gaza? Uh, Senator Cotton, I, we don't have any evidence of genocide uh, being uh, created. Uh, so that's a, that's a no. Israel's not committing genocide in Gaza. Uh, we don't have evidence of that, to Thank my you. knowledge. Yeah. Better than Director Burns and Director Haynes did last year, last month at the Intelligence Committee when they dodged that question. Um, you stand accused by those protesters of greenlighting genocide. Would you like to respond to that accusation? Uh, what I would say, uh, Senator Cotton, from the very beginning is that we uh, committed to help uh, assist uh, in, uh, Israel in defending its, uh, uh, its territory and its people by providing security assistance. And I would remind everybody that, you know, what happened on uh, October 7th was absolutely horrible. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Numbers of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Israeli citizens uh, um, killed, uh, and then um, a couple of hundred uh, Israeli citizens uh, taken hostage. American and citizens as well. American, American citizens as well. So, so you deny the accusation that you green, greenlit genocide? I, I absolutely deny. Okay. For the record, I don't think Israel is committing genocide. I don't believe you greenlit genocide either. Um, uh, you talked a lot with Senator Reid about Israel's responsibility to provide aid in Gaza. Why does Israel have a responsibility to provide aid to Gaza? Israel was the victim of an unprovoked, vicious attack on October 7th. Why should they provide aid to their to the aggressor nation? Or aggressor, uh, Gaza's not a nation, to the aggressors on October 7th. We didn't provide aid to Germany and Japan during World War II. Uh, what we, d we did provide aid to uh, and assistance to many of the countries that we've operated in recently. As but not in World War II. If you had been in George Marshall's or Dwight Eisenhower's position in World War II, would you have wanted to provide aid to Germany? I, I, I really do believe, Senator, that if they want to create a, a lasting uh, effect and in terms of uh, stability, then I think that uh, something needs to be done to account uh, to, uh, to help uh, the, the Palestinian people. I get, and, I, I get that, but they're in the middle of the war. Like we, we believe that, too, after World War II. That's why we had the Marshall Plan. That's why we rebuilt Japan. But that was after the war was won, not in the middle of it. And in the meantime, like if it's, it's not Israel's responsibility to provide aid. It's certainly not our responsibility, but we're spending t our tax dollars to build this giant pier to send aid into Gaza. Who's going to accept that aid? Who's going to be at the end of the pier on the shore taking aid from American forces? It, that's, that's still uh, being worked out, but there, there will be... Uh uh, NGOs that, uh, that, that will help to distribute that but aid. Not, uh, that Hamas is in charge of Gaza. When aid goes to Gaza, Hamas doesn't divert it or commandeer it or steal it. It accepts it. And anybody operating in Gaza is under the thumb of Hamas. I, I just think it's very ill-considered, and I don't think it's going to end very well. Let me move on to Ukraine. Um, the Biden administration has discouraged Ukraine from launching refinery strikes against Russia. Well, why... Is the Biden administration discouraging Ukraine from undertaking some of the most effective tax, attacks on Russia's war-making capabilities? Certainly, th those, those attacks could have uh, uh, a knock-on effect uh, for, in terms of the, the global energy uh, uh, situation. And, and, but quite frankly, I think Ukraine uh, is better served and going after uh, uh, tactical and, and, uh, and operational targets that, uh, that can directly influence uh, the current fight. So. so it sounds to me like the Biden administration doesn't want gas prices to go up in an election year based on all the other actions they've taken to drive up gas prices further. But anyway, I want to turn uh, to one final point about the recruiting crisis our services face. The Army is the most acute. It's challenging all services, though. I've spoken to uh, numerous recruiters, frontline recruiters, heads of recruiting battalions. Two of the most common things I hear is genesis and a lack of medical providers to process new recruits. Um, do you have a memo on your desk from the services to place a pause on genesis? Uh, no, uh, not. Have you received that? Because my sources tell me you've received a request from the services to pause genesis. I, I, you know, I talked to the services about the service uh, secretaries about Genesis and also 
have talked to the service chiefs about Genesis as well. Uh, and uh, I've, I don't have knowledge of any, any okay. of that memo. But what I will tell you is that you know, we're, we're doing uh, everything we can to uh, improve uh, the number of uh, health care providers that are available and to streamline uh, the operations with Genesis. Now, Genesis is a, you know, it's an issue that our recruiting force had to work through, but it is not the sole cause of... Uh, of well, no, it's, I, I know it's not the sole cause. There's a lot of other causes. I just say it, it comes up constantly. And just for those listening at home, Genesis is not just the first book of the Bible. It's this giant medical records system that now catches everything that's ever happened to you. So, you know, every drill sergeant accuses recruits of lying to their recruiters so they can get into the service. But now Genesis catches all that. So if you broke your arm when you were 12 playing peewee football, Genesis knows it. If you were prescribed an SSRI because you were depressed when you were 13 because your parents were getting a bad divorce, Genesis knows it. And you got to go through a whole lot of rigmarole to get a waiver. Now, look, we, we can't have psychotics during the military, but if a kid was on an SSRI when he's 13, does that really matter? Does it really matter? If he broke his arm when he was 13, he can't have a degenerate bone condition, but he broke his arm. But, and I, I know you, you'll say, because I've heard it before, that there's waiver approvals here. It takes a long time. And, like, if you're, like, a super gung-ho Captain America kid who wants to serve above everything else, you'll wait that time. But if it's going to take 120 or 150 days to join when you get a job at Amazon for 20 or $25 an hour, you're going to lose those people. I, I think you really need to look at the way Genesis works and the approval authority. And the, even if you have approval authority, you know, whether it's a, an E-8 out on the front lines at a mall or a lieutenant colonel at the headquarters, you're counting on them to take what they might see as some serious personal risk that doesn't have a lot of reward. That's why I think this has to be written in the policy. My, my time is over, but I, I do think this is a serious question for all the services and that I'd encourage you to, to look at it and take action sooner rather than later. I, I don't disagree with you, Senator. I've, I've been a recruiter, and I know how important this is to recruiters. Uh, and, uh, and so um, what we need to continue to do is upgrade uh, um, what requires a waiver and, 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 and make sure that we're doing everything we can to provide enough uh, medical uh, professionals to be able to shorten the time that it takes to get that waiver. And so I think there are a number of things that, that we can do and should do, and we are doing some of those things. And we'll continue to press on this uh, to, uh, to shorten the time that, uh, uh, that it takes for recruiters to get these packets through.